everyone to the Kendall Report, where I share my 44 years of experience to help you manage your portfolios and protect your wealth. Remember to subscribe, like, and share those videos. So, folks, uh, in tonight's video, I'm going to do a quick outlook for the week coming. And then what we're going to do after that, I'm going to do an update on Tesla. And we'll go through some basic markets. I'm trying to get this to about 30 minutes or less. So let's get into tonight's video. Welcome, everyone. Uh, I had promised that I was going to do a produce video with the premiere tonight. As it turned out, uh, life got in the way, and I'm just going to do a quick live. So we'll, we'll see how many folks show up. No one knows I'm coming live right now, so no expectations other than a few of you on Twitter, maybe. So uh, anyway, as as we look to this week, we've got a, a fairly big week, as always, when the Fed is coming on. And we're looking at the potential for nothing, right? So I don't think the Fed's going to change any rates. There was a time last week that I discussed both in my Substack as well as on the channel that I thought maybe they would be in a place if PPI came in a little softer, which it did not. It came in the opposite. What, what we're looking at now is nothing changed. The Fed will most likely say nothing new. The only thing that I'll be looking for, as always, when we go through these type of events, is that we'll be looking at the, the potential for any change in the language, especially around QT. So um, as we... <laughs> break down on what the Fed's likely to do is probably, I think they're going to reference some of the employment numbers again that we're seeing. The, the fact that what we're really looking at is, is continued great uh, numbers on employment. Let me look at a couple notes here. I'll just discuss a couple things here. You know, we're, we're continuing to see, uh, last week we saw claims coming in a little less uh, than was expected. We also saw the continuing claims drop back to uh, 1.18. I have the numbers here. Yeah. And so the the effects of that are that the uh, Fed's going to continue to do what they're doing. Uh, they're still afraid of inflation and maybe rightfully so. We can't seem to get a break. And really, maybe what comes out of this is that what we're likely to see is that the they're going to have to acknowledge that maybe it's not a 2% target. They may have to raise their target. So we've got quite a few things that we're going to have to watch as we go forward uh, from that standpoint. Uh, other n news that's coming out this week, really nothing. Uh, I mentioned claims on Thursday, 218 expected, and we're looking at these numbers coming at one8 something again on the uh, continued claims. So I, I just don't see uh, anything really changing from what the Fed's been telling us and most likely what we're going to see, and I'll go through some of the details here in just a minute, is that the a sideways tra trading range is just going to continue. A uh, week before last, we were down 0.26 week to week. Last week, 0.1 basis the S&P. So, I mean, we're flat as flat can be, and the range just continues to be locked in. Uh, we, and I'll show you in a minute. I'll go through some of the short-term and the intermediate charts just on S&P and, and NASDAQ tonight. Uh, once again, the... Russell was an underperformer. It was down 2.3. I mean, that, that index is just doomed. I mean, there's no no coming back. I don't have the numbers right in front of me, but I looked at a couple of things, and I've been talking to you folks about the mid-cap sector or mid-cap sector of the markets. And what we're really looking at, that asset class is really doing pretty well. I saw some basic old school mutual funds up 25 to 30 percent on the mid caps. So there's some pretty good managed mutual funds. I've always argued that 
the ETFs for the most part are there's some good ones out there managed, but most of them just aren't up to par. The mutual fund guys still have a little bit of an edge, but they have a lot of fees embedded in them as well. But I, I should have made note of these. I think I put them in the, my WaveTech login so I could watch uh, some of these on a watch list. But the bottom line is what we're seeing is uh, that's that's a hot sector, and you pick the stocks right, you can really make uh, make some a uh, lot of money. As a matter of fact, maybe the money's already been made. So let's talk about a couple of things that before I s set up, and I'll go in through some of the technicals. And the I I think what uh, as we look at uh, some of the the indexes, I think we're about to roll over. And I think there's going to be some real challenges coming up uh, very, very soon. And I've been talking about what on, both on my Substack and throughout the week on the channel when I'm talking about things is I'm continuing to tell you that we're in this trading range, but there is a lot of uh, cycles that are starting to come into play. I'll go briefly through the WaveTech database here in a minute, just so you can get up to speed on that. And I, I think really what the expectations are from my viewpoint is sideways trading range. I'll try to set the range up. And then the best thing, and I'm just telling you folks, get the Substack. Go to kendallreport.com slash newsletter. It's eight bucks a month for the premium. That's where I'm doing all of the all of the research on a day-to-day -day and, and a micro basis. And for the most part, this channel has shifted to more of a macro type view. Tuesday is going to be stocks. We're going to focus in and on mining stocks. We'll probably focus on gold and copper and uh, maybe a, a couple others. So make sure that you make comments in this video on what you'd like to see me cover, and they need to be in that in that sector. We're going to focus just on those stocks as we come into this week. Uh, last week, I focused in on more of the AI stocks and an ETF hack. There's just uh, so much to to cover. I could spend all day on the on the internet. I hope everybody that if you came to the Friday, there was some really good training type uh, for traders. You, you, there was really good training on on that Friday video. So go back and watch that, maybe scroll through it. Uh, there were some real nuggets in there, and I'm going to do my best to try to get uh, some of these things pulled out because I went through some of the psychological and other elements there in trading. So go back and watch that Friday live stream. And this week, there is going to be potentially a change to what I'm doing on the channel, which will be that we'll probably get into um, on Wednesday. I may, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do a video, which is really bad because that's Fed Day. And so I may have to come up on, on Thursday. I told you Thursday's going to be an off day. I'll let you know tomorrow night's video exactly what we're doing. So let's get in technicals. Let's take a quick look at the WaveTech database, and then we're just going to go right through. I'm about eight minutes in, so I'm hoping to be done before we get through the um, the half mark here, 30 minutes. So let's go ahead and get into that. All right, this is pretty phenomenal for me, folks. Uh, I talk about our database all the time, but we're at 87.13. We actually got uh, 404 buys for tomorrow morning's opening and 363 sells. And that is really interesting because what's ha happening here, we're still getting traction at this level. Uh, last time I saw something like this was back in, I'm going to say it out loud, 2020, when we came out of uh, mid-2020 and we got into uh, early 21, the market, we just got all kinds of traction. We got up to, I think, 92% on this database. And at that point, we did get overbought, but the, the scenario of of what we're going through right now. I'm not sure I've witnessed a methodical move like what we're seeing here. And I'm gonna to continue to tell you folks that we're going to 
This is going to put us out into July and maybe all, all the way into October. In my Substack tonight, you can also go to kindlereport.substack.com and you can get a free trial for seven days. So sign up for that and make sure you get that. Um, in tonight's video, I've got some some uh, prompts in Chat GPT that I'm going to run. And it's going to give me some. Uh, it's going to take all the numbers from what you're seeing on the screen right now, uh, and it'll basically do some calculations and what the average return and where where the duration is going to take us and some average return. So I'll be talking about that later in the newsletter when we go through that, and. But all, all I want to make uh, make sure you understand is that this is uh, the intermediate database. This is something else. So let's go over, click over to daily real quick. And let's come to the all stats page. And uh, daily has backed off pretty good. We got 2,000 sell signals for Monday and 280 buys. So the short term is backing off while the intermediate is still picking up constituents to that it likes. So it's really, it, this is, you know, listen, I watch this database every day since 19, uh, officially we had this database in place in 1999. <laughs> that was a long time ago. That's when this database first came in. I think there was only about four or 5,000 stocks. Now we have 15,266. That's stocks, mutual funds, ETFs, bond funds, the whole bit. So that is definitely, that's a, a lot of things to look at here. And we're still... 56%, we're just seeing this rotation happen. So the type of things that we get out of the next couple of weeks, uh, just come back on here, at, that, that we get out of here in this week as we go through Fed week and we start to see this uh, potential rotation coming. You folks should know these numbers by now, but 42% below that number bullish, that sets a tone where we might see some negative rotation. And we're going to need to get under that 42% before we're going to see the intermediate rollover. And like I said, the intermediate's pushing 87.12. That's just an, in, that's an insane number. So could you argue that it's overbought? Yeah, but if you look at the, uh, on the screen here, let me go off screen so you can see this. If you look at the, the screen here, right now on the optimized weekly, the percent fulfilled is only 34%. And the uh, average profit is 30% on these trades. And right now, it's the current average duration. Current average duration is actually only 10% uh, yielded, not duration, but of the profits. So we've got two-thirds of this trade to go yet in this duration. I remember last year when uh, we were, uh, this is almost like an instant replay. And one of the things that a lot of folks are, are telling you, and I think, I think it's interesting. They're telling you that this is going to be a bad year. I saw Elon Musk talking, uh, quoting Warren Buffett, who is supposedly a, a never timed the market, right? He doesn't even believe in it. It's timing the market. So, um, you know, but the, my, my point here is everybody's saying this is going to be a rough year. So guess what? I've told you these, uh, this folks, just fade all these folks because this is a really possibly back-to-back -back good years. And those of you that are institutional clients or your, your money manager or uh, an advisor, you can't miss this one. I know a lot of guys missed it, guys and gals missed this last year and did, way underperformed the market because the numbers were way big on, on the returns last year to only to see you can't do it back to back. And I still think, and I, I, I've actually, last year I told you housing stocks are going to make a lot of money. We made, I think, on a portfolio, we did 76%. This year, it's been mid-cap is kind of the theme. And, of course, um, we've had the AI stocks, but that's way too um, small of a window to go to. So let's go ahead and let's dig into the S&P and take a look at that.
Okay, so I've got the uh, daily up here. We'll start here. And I'm just going to make this so we can see this good enough. The PPMs are trying to turn up just a little bit. So th this is what I, I keep arguing. The absolute downside, I believe, for this week is going to be probably around the 21 period moving average, which is 51.25. This is a June contract. I don't see us getting much below that number. And that should be the range is set up. It should be between 52.45 and, and we'll say 51.20 would be the extreme if we get some downside. The whole scenario here, folks, that, that's happening is you can see we're rolling over. I'm going to go to the weekly chart here next, and I'm just going to touch on a few things. We're going to move on. I'm, I'll go through as much detail as I can uh, later tonight when I write the Substack letter. But let's go to the weekly. And you can see here it's starting to become obvious that the it's starting to stall, and you can see the the WTARs. These are the predictive wave tech indicators. This is telling you where the slope, what it's doing internally with the moving averages, and it's starting to roll down. I actually have the the webs on here. We're trading below the webs. I think we're going to set up a, a pretty decent range if we look at the potential here. On the uh, market grid on the weekly, it's going to be over on the far right. We're looking at S1, uh, 45, 46. S2 is about where I just told you is the extreme at the 45, 22. 4,500 basically is S3. On the upside here this week, you're going to see some pretty decent numbers right around uh, S1, 52, 12. R2, I'm sorry, I said S1, R1, 51.12, and R2 is going to be 52.46. And this is a, approximately, this is approximately where I've been talking about, this is where this range locks in. And if you look at the week before last, last week was one of the most narrow ranges that we've had for a while. And we're just seeing this thing just kind of locked down here. Uh, as far as any big movement, I don't see any big rallies out of here. And what's interesting, if anything, we have a little downward pressure to ultimately move down towards a 10 period moving average. That's way down at 50.63, but it is rising. Let me check that, that angle here. It's rising about 40 handles per week, so that puts us right. Next week, we're right at 40, uh, 5,100. So that, it looks to me like it's going to be um, the absolute floor for right now. And the the key to making money going forward, if you're an index trader, then you got a range. You can probably start to put in uh, some straddles around this price range and that 5250 5150 maybe 51 handle on the downside you probably straddle that and uh, take some money and that will be that'll probably be one of the easier trades as far as uh, everything else goes like i said we're still seeing positive rotation in the markets on an intermediate Short term, we're, we've been whipsawing between about 50, I'm going back to the database here for just a minute. We've been whipsawing from about 52% bullish back to uh, about 62. So it's just been in that range. And it's just a, a rotation. What's what's interesting, I've been telling you about this just real quick. I'm, I'm backing up just a little bit before we go forward. What I've been telling you is that rotation in database is very healthy. And what we're likely to see, I hate having this TV on behind me. I'm sorry about that. I'm going to, I'm going to get something else on there. Anyway, the, the whole effect of this range is really very healthy because what we're seeing is a change of hands and rotation going on in the database, but it's still maintaining a reasonable percent bullish here. And that is a very... And my, in my view, a very healthy scenario. And like I said, on, on the intermediate, we're still seeing uh, traction coming in on the intermediate. So let's let's flip over and take a look, quick look at the Nasdaq.
So I'll stick with the NASDAQ weekly and we'll see. And I've been talking about this also in the Substack because what's happening is we're seeing this. It's got a little bit more of a, a negative tone here. Let me see if I can expand this just so we can, you can see. Even I've got the webs up here. These are WaveTech webs and they're starting to roll over a little bit. And that 10 pair moving average, 17,924 is going to be key. If we look at the market grid, this is weekly NASDAQ. Well, if we look at that, we're going to be looking at 17,908, which is pretty close to that moving average. And then S2 is 17,741. So this appears to me just to be the, the range that we're likely to, to stay in. On the upside, SR1. 18208 R2 18376. So just look for that to be a volatility range. Just click over to daily. And you can see now on the daily, we we're just looking at the S&P daily and what we're seeing there is uh, something much much different is here we've already rolled over to the 21. I was just talking about getting to the 21. So the NASDAQ continues to lead the way as far as the trends go on the intermediate and on the short term. Well, this has been the case for, well, you know, for probably two years, right? And even in the micro movements, we're seeing that that movement uh, continue to be a driver. So we could go as low as the the 40 period moving average, and that is 17.839. That puts us right at those weekly numbers. This is a, a daily chart we're looking at. Uh, it does show, though, that we're we're seeing some uh, some things uh, t uh, tick up on the upside, and so um, will we get a rally? Maybe so. We we'll probably come back into this range right now. The market grids turned down pretty good, and that's where we're going. So, um, what I'll do here, just because I told you we're going to do an update on Tesla, we're going to do that. So I don't want to sound like the nightly weather show. I'll do that last tonight. I want to cover very briefly. I'm at 22 minutes. I want to do the clo best I can getting done in about 30 minutes. So we're going to touch on, uh, on the 10-year treasuries, and then we're going to go right into Tesla Get the newsletter. That's going to be your best. On Sunday nights, very expansive. I'll have all the reports and and uh, consensus numbers and everything that are coming out economically. I'll go into and go into detail and some of my thoughts on the Fed as well. So remember, kendallreport.substack.com or kendallreport.com slash newsletter. You can get there either way. Okay. So let's go ahead and... Uh, take a look at the treasuries. So treasuries, I think, are really uh, what a turnaround. I mean, just that one PPI report the other day did a complete about face. I was literally uh, talking, it looked like some of the projections on the Augos and everything were getting a little weak. I thought we would hang around 4, 415, 425 as a peak and down maybe 4%. But we, we printed down over here on the 8th. That was the low at 403, and we just bounced off that 4% level. I don't. Uh, yeah, I, I do want to show this. I always bring up these numbers. This are pretty light up here, so I'll just tell you what they are. My cursor is up here at, at the top, and those FIB targets on the upside here. Let me bring that up here real quick. Are 4.57, and I was talking about staying under the 430 level. And here we are right at 430. 433 has been uh, absolute, I get a ceiling for this market for a while. It still looks like it could be, but now we're getting these Fibonacci targets way on the upside. And so some of the scenario that I've been talking about from the standpoint 
of um, market expectations here on interest rates got totally blown out of the water. So it's, you know, uh, just that, that one perspective day, the PPI set market sentiment completely the opposite of what it was looking like. I'll show you the weekly chart here as well. And the weeklies were, they still have some negative connotation, but I don't know if you folks remember, you could go back and probably watch a uh, week before last videos, but the algos were suggesting that we were just seeing a lot of downward pressure, especially on the 10 week moving average. That, that week, last week when we reverted, this thing is just flatlined and to the point where most likely what's going to happen, and we did get what I refer to as an RTX sell signal. So it does suggest that we get a flat line from the standpoint of the market just going back into a range. I don't think we're going to print it much higher, at least until Paul's talking on Wednesday. Maybe we can get some movement there, but I think we come back in and the numbers that come back into around 425, 420, we'll probably see a pullback in there. That's about 10 basis points from where we closed. So look for that from that standpoint. Okay. Okay, so uh, we'll finish here. I'll probably go over just a few minutes. I, I I have some thoughts on Tesla. Boy, it's interesting on Twitter and even on the channel here. Uh, I think I picked up like 2,000 subscribers because of my Tesla video or something like that. We we're looking at some of the metrics. And by the way, um, we're up, actually up over 43,000 now. So thanks, everybody is coming on board. And I see a lot of new names I'm, uh, I don't recognize. So that's a good thing. Uh, appreciate everybody that's joined the channel. So Tesla, um, a lot of folks seem to think somehow, I, I'm really not that impressed with the car. I've owned some nice vehicles in the past. And from a luxury standpoint, they're not very good. But what they are good at is the autonomous driving. I know, like, uh, what was it, it's 12.1 or something just came out, and everybody's going crazy on Twitter and showing how well it drives. I mean, that, that technology, just like what we saw with the Tesla chargers, they, they license that. Basically, anybody can use it. I think the same thing happens with the autonomous driving. And I think they ultimately end up you know, basically, people are going to be able to get access to all of that technology. I think robotics could be much, much bigger than the the auto. I know they started as an auto company, but the AI, the robotics, and I think the uh, just the autonomous driving, that's probably going to be the biggest parts of Tesla. But that's going to be, I, I think everything's on on hold now. We know that the major shareholder of Tesla is Elon Musk. And if you're on right now, if you go on X, they are advertising their cars. If you recall, Musk said, we don't need to advertise. We just, it's all organic. Not anymore. Uh, you're looking at Ford. I, I saw somebody post, I think, on my Twitter account that Ford's trying to sell those uh, their electric trucks and they're discounting them by 25%, like 15,000 off, and nobody still wants them. Okay, maybe it's the Ford. Uh, sales are flat to down a little bit. Margins are down. They're dropping prices. Everybody, all the all all the fanboys and girls are telling us uh, what's going to happen here. I think they're panicking. I think they're I think they're seeing sales drop off. If you took away the incentives and all that, then they would be in big, big trouble. And um, yeah, I drive a German car and I can tell you I, uh, I got that my car last summer and I could have bought a t Tesla. I didn't want one. Okay. Um, it's a, uh, it's a lot, it's just as fun going uh, three seconds to zero to 60 in a fuel car as it is an electric, I guarantee you. So um, anyway, so let's go in and let's take a look at a, a couple metrics here from a technical standpoint, because it closed on its 
absolutely on on just about the lows of the week, which was pretty ugly. And then we got you know we got Kathy Kathy out and people quoting Kathy in her um, doing air quotes right five year. Uh, investment outlook, and I always, I've said this forever, folks. I, most of you have um, and gotten to know me in the last four years since the pandemic, but I've been saying this forever. Anybody that talks about a five-year investment program is actually throwing darts. I mean, who knows? Uh, no one knows what's going to be in five years. And I've told you before, from my viewpoint, investing is sort of like driving down a country road. At night, no moon, full bright lights, you're just looking for the next corner. So you're always looking ahead to as far as you can. You start going out too far, the chances of you being right goes down substantially as as you get uh, this longer term. You know, we we've seen we've seen this kind of stuff before. And but I think what's happening, there's a lot of pressure coming into the uh, into these margins and everything. So let's take a look at the, uh, yeah. So, yeah, I, I agree. So let me say Audi, BMW. Yeah. That I, I, I was a Mercedes guy. I was a Porsche guy and I've been a BMW guy for a while. So, uh, let's take a look at, at some of this stuff. Let's go over to the technicals and then I'll come back on. We'll finish tonight's stream. All right, so this is the weekly chart, and the only thing that's happening here, even though you can see that the algos are suggesting that the PPMs are going to turn up here, yeah, and, and uh, Brad, I agree also on SpaceX. I didn't touch on that. SpaceX is huge enterprise, there's no doubt. Um, it's... Uh, somebody, I, I, anyway, I'm just going to leave it alone. So this, this downward targets here is we're looking at 147 right here and then 127. And we start to get in to some danger zones here. And I, I am going to talk about something that is, this is going to be pretty controversial, but I, and I'm trying to get some stocks together to show you these patterns. And I already know the argument people are going to say, but Bob, these are different kind of companies. But anyway, I'll show you, I'll, I'll actually touch on this tonight. But the algos are turning, are going to turn up, but not this week. So the pressure, we're looking at a minus 3.6. This is parabolic down. And so we probably have, I would say, about a 60% chance, whether it happens this week, over the next two weeks, of printing down into this 147 level. That's probably your next target. And I think if certain things happen, then we could see an acceleration and downside. So I'm going to show you a chart here. And let me, let, let me just do something here real quick, because... This is um, this is where where it gets kind of interesting. So I could show you if we turn the clock back to 2022, and I'm just looking at the chart. No, no predictive anything here. This this chart pattern is the same chart pattern that I've talked about for years. If you knew me in 2008, some of you did. I was talking about the banks were in the death pattern. This is the death cycle. And I'm going to, there's some numbers on this screen that are absolutely insane because it's the, uh, this big pattern here looks like almost every meme stock in 22 that got crushed, right? When Kathy Woods was buying some of these stocks all the way down. And like I said, she's like the worst portfolio manager ever to exist on the planet. I know that sounds rude, but it, I mean, she just, she's a buy the dipper. So she bought like 175,000 shares of Tesla. So that's, that doesn't vote well. But what we're seeing from this pattern, and it's very interesting to me, because when I saw this, I went, I've got to talk about this. So let me just uh, crunch this down a little bit so you can see it. Down here, <laughs> this is a ridiculous number. 
the Fibonacci targets for this pattern is a negative 13,687. Obviously, we can only go to zero. But what, what's happening here, in my opinion, there's a very good chance that we're going to see that uh, 120 to 101 level challenged. And I think this is going to get a little bit ugly. And especially when I see as many folks that are coming out in defense and and they're using this little soundbite from Kathy Wood talking about $2,000 stock price. If it hits 2000 it won't be because of cars. It will be, be because of what I talked about a minute ago. And I, I just... I could be wrong. Listen, I'm not uh, necessarily a, a fundamental analyst of anything about this stock, but it's pretty easy to see. So I, I, I've got this all set up. So 147 next target. So let me come back up here and then we'll we'll call it quits here. I think it's pretty easy to see as we we come into this uh, whole pattern that we've been in, that EV has kind of been a little bit of a fad. It's been supported by government subsidies. There's a lot of folks really don't care about it. I could have bought one, don't want one. Um, the people that have them love them, and I think they're, they're really cool. I call them iPhones with wheels. That's pretty much what they are. And But the technology behind them, everything's cool. But you're not getting mass adoption of the EVs. In fact, I did some research. Right now, EVs represent about 1.7% of all cars on the market. And anybody that's, you could go back and do the old school, let's go to audio, and you could go to uh, when we went from cassette, uh, not cassette, go before that, 8-track tape to cassette to DVD to I, uh, iPad or, yeah, iPad or the iPod. And that, if you just go from there, you can see the adoption numbers and mass markets. It's very easy. And 1.7 is not it. And it's going to take a lot. I mean, you got to tip probably about get close to 20, 17, 22%. That's a long ways. If you figure out how many electric cars that is relative to the total cars on the road, I should have that number, but it's a very, very big number. And that's not going to happen. Not that Tesla's not going to sell cars. I mean, uh, you're looking at um, all the other players are even probably very close to going uh, bankrupt. And I always uh, confuse Rivian with the with the one that is going out. I don't remember the name that is uh, on the edge already. I think they're filing bankruptcy. You know, the, it's just it's just not going to. It's just not the right time. And I won't do the argument which I have before, as I think Toyota probably has the right answer, which is actually the uh, hydrogen piston engine, non electric. Okay. Uh, there's worse infrastructure for that. So there's a lot to be done to even get to that type of uh, technology. And, you know, good old-fashioned hydrocarbon fuels work really, really well. You know, I, I live, uh, if you go down into Phoenix Valley, I'm about 90 miles out of, uh, from Phoenix. If you go down there, you'll see a lot of Teslas where uh, it's nuclear-powered and hydro and Phoenix is the greenest place in the country, probably. And then when you come up the mountains here, you, you could go days without seeing any anything that looks like a Tesla. They're up here, but it's a very, very small percentage. So my argument is on all this is I think the, uh, the bears might have a little more power. I think the bulls are really fighting to hang on. I think Tesla's fighting to hang on. They're running ads all of a sudden. If you start to turn on mainstream TV and you see Tesla ads, oh boy, hang on then. Because that means that we're going to see um, some uh, some crazy stuff. And it was funny because I, um, <laughs> I, I was just, uh, jo Joel Taylor just stole one of my lines. And this is interesting because what... Well, um, that's exactly right. The Prius was a much better. Uh, the hybrids are way better than anything, I think. So, um, 
Yeah, uh, listen, the whole the whole thing here is uh, I'm not anti, I'm not anything. I'm just I'm looking at the market, and I think there's some challenges. And I think when it comes, my biggest concern now I got to close this out is my biggest concern with Tesla is also how Musk is. Uh, levered up a little bit on his own shares. I know he's got a lot in there. Uh, people arguing about revenues and all that stuff. But if this thing prints down, I know one of the deals, I've been trying to find it. One of the deals that he financed, if the stock drops below a certain level, he has to sell stock. And if that happens, he's going to trigger the whole thing. It'll be a domino flip, right? Just hit that first domino, and then there'll be more sellers, and there'll be a washout. Then, at that point, maybe you can back up the truck. Until then, I wouldn't do that. So, yeah, I just, um, I, it, listen, there's a there's a lot of common sense that comes in. Uh, I know I'm an old dude. Uh, anybody that knows me, um, I'm we do we're working with a lot of AI here and I've been told that AI is just a, a joke. I've been doing AI since uh, 1996. I built my first expert system. We still run our products on that. We are now integrating starting to integrate through uh, chat GPT, some of the augos and stuff that are that are coming out of our uh, some of the newer things that we're doing here and trying to get to that next level where you can really get into some predictive math that's going to help all of us out in as far as our investing. And it's this new stuff that's out. And I think when ChatGPT5 comes, it's going to be an absolute game changer uh, to a level that you can't even estimate. And anyway, folks, that's going to be it because I can keep going forever. Um, and yeah, so next strong supply level, yeah, 147 for me, 147, then 125. And all right, folks, thank you so much. Sorry for not getting the the produced video together. I've, I've got more projects going than anybody should, and most of my uh, peers are uh, sucking on oxygen tanks and trying to stay stay alive. And I'm. Uh, trying to expand uh, businesses and do a lot of stuff. So my goal is to make all of our lives better. So anyway, folks, thank you for watching. We'll talk to you t uh, tomorrow at 6 p.m. Eastern time. Get the sub stack. Get, if you haven't got the indicators, go, go to kendallreport.com slash indicators and get that. We got a whole bunch of really cool stuff going. I'll tell you about it very soon. This is a, a major breakthrough uh, through is, is actually happening in the background. So anyway, folks, have a great day trading tomorrow. We'll see you tomorrow afternoon.